Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We are studying the lesson, Why Some People Do Not Get Healed. Why Some People Do Not Get Healed. And we're on reason number nine, and that's because of not showing mercy. Because of not showing mercy. Mercy. We've gone into a definition. Let me give you again a definition for mercy. It's like a two sided coin. On one side, mercy is not getting the punishment you do deserve. And on the other side, it's getting benefits you don't deserve. Getting benefits that you don't deserve. Healing is an action of God's mercy. It's an action and expression of God's mercy. So if you need healing, you need mercy. We read that in Matthew 9 and in Matthew 20, where in both cases, two blind men called out to the Lord, have mercy on us, son of David, and he healed them. They received their sight. They asked for mercy. They received sight. Healing is an action and expression of God's mercy. And so, but if you want to receive mercy, you must show mercy. Matthew 5, 7 says, blessed are the merciful for they will be shown mercy. And so we've been talking about the, this week and the last couple of weeks, the attitudes of the heart and actually the attitudes of the heart are spiritual forces. Faith is a spiritual force and fear is a spiritual force. Fear is the polar opposite of faith. And we've taught on the lesson of fear, freedom from fear, deliverance from fear, because it is the polar opposite of faith. It is believing bad and it is a creative force to bring bad. Just like faith, when you believe good, Faith brings the good things to pass. Fear will bring bad things to pass. Also, love and hate are spiritual forces of the heart. Also, joy is a spiritual force. And so is sorrow or depression or sadness. These are spiritual forces of the heart. And we've been talking about the power of our words in Luke chapter 6. Verses 43 to 45, Luke 6, 43 to 45. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its fruit. Verse 45, the good man brings good things. This translation says things. Others translations say treasures, but things I like because brings good things. What are the good things? The things for one are the forces and then those forces produce things in your life. So the spiritual forces coming out of your heart produce things in your life. So verse 45, the good man brings good things, forces which produce things. Out of the good stored up in his heart, the good stored up in his heart and that evil man. Now, I've said over the last several days, when you see the word evil in the Bible, you need to change it to the word bad, because in our modern English, evil has the understanding of being extreme, extremely bad. That's evil. And most people would say, well, I'm not evil. Well, evil being extremely bad is not what the Bible is talking about. In the Bible, the word evil is simply the opposite of good. It is just the opposite of good. So anything that's not good is evil. It's the opposite. So in our modern English, a better word is bad. Because in modern English, bad is the opposite of good. So I encourage you, whenever you see the word evil, change it to the word bad. So again, Luke 6, 45, the good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And the bad man brings bad things out of the bad stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. 
So bad comes out of the bad stored up in the heart. For out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. And I've been reading to you this week from a book called Hofetz Heim, C-H-O-F-E-T-Z, and the next word C-H-A-I-M, A Lesson a Day. A Lesson a Day. And the subtitle at the bottom is The Concepts and Laws of Proper Speech Arranged for Daily Study. It is published by Art Scroll. It is compiled by some rabbis, book uh, based on the works and writings of a rabbi named Hofetzheim. And so this book is large, and I'm just really reading from the introduction, which is about 50 pages long. That's the only part I've been reading from, but I'm reading portions of this book. It is written to Jews. So I'm changing the word Jew to Christian and so that we can apply it to ourselves because as I have been reading this, it so, so parallels scriptures and it expounds spiritual truths and explains spiritual truths about the power of our words so much better than I can say it myself. So that I'm reading from it, but then I read a phrase and I insert my own words and I expound what's written and I give you more scriptures. I give you New Testament scriptures, a lot of New Testament scriptures so that we can study this parallel to the Bible and using our Bible as our textbook. But this is an excellent parallel study resource. Because it explains this spiritual principle of the power of our words. And so let me just again read a few statements that I've read before. Words can affect miracles. Words of encouragement can dispel despair, even for someone in a terribly difficult situation. And words have the power to take what is ordinary and make it holy. Words are the sole medium through which we fulfill the purpose God created us. And that is to communicate God's greatness and presence to the world. We are here. This is my words to be the representative of God to the world. And if we are speaking evil or bad, I should say, then we are representing God in a bad way. Whenever you speak bad, you represent God. In a bad way. And when you speak good, you represent God. We are the ambassadors for Christ. You know, we are the image of God, the ambassadors for God in this world. We communicate to the world the love of God, or we are supposed to communicate to the world the love of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, the compassion of God, the kindness of God, the goodness of God. But if we are not speaking those good things, and if we're speaking bad, then we are speaking harshness and judgment. We are relating a bad image of God to the world. And so to go on reading, the Bible teaches us that the words we choose determine how we experience our lives. By taking hold of our power of speech, we take hold of life itself. Well, that is a great parallel to the scripture, Proverbs 18, 21, Proverbs 18, 21 says death and life are in the power of the tongue of the tongue in the power of the tongue and the Bible. God does not simply hand us the power of the tongue and leave us to discover how it works. He gives us detailed instructions in the form of the commands of Speaking good, speaking good things. And these are God's human relations training program that teaches us how to interact with others in the best possible way. And although most Christians are generally aware of the Bible's prohibitions against evil speaking, the Bible commands us not to speak evil. Most Christians know that. 
This devastating force has somehow glided through the centuries disguised as a relatively harmless aspect of human nature. So people think that their words are harmless, benign, but actually it has great spirit that our words have great spiritual power and great spiritual force. And so then it, sh- it goes on to say that the mouth expresses the contents of the heart. Well, that's what we just read in Luke six forty five, And then it goes on to say a mouth that spews venom spews venom. Have you ever heard anybody just start spewing out angry and hateful words in a torrent of anger and hatred and bitterness, accusations, charges against another person? That's venom coming out of their mouth. So it says a mouth that spews venom can only be the outlet of a heart that produces it. It can only be the outlet of a heart that produces it. So out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is speaking. So when you are releasing venom, if you're releasing criticism, if you're releasing judgment and bad attitude and negativity, that's a direct reflection of what is in your heart. We were also reading Psalm 34 verses 11 through 14. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil or keep your tongue from bad and your lips from speaking lies. Turn from evil or turn from bad and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. So we see here that if you desire to see good days, Keep your tongue from bad. And so speaking good instead of speaking bad. And then so the mouth that spews venom can only be the outlet of a heart that produces it. So the Bible directs us to replace the dark with the light. The Bible directs us to replace the dark with the light. And then yesterday I closed with reading Matthew six twenty three. If your eyes are bad. Now, eyes. Well, that's sight. That is also perception. Perception. So if your perception is bad, if you are seeing things bad in a bad way, if your eyes or if your perception is bad, listen to this, Matthew 6, 23, if your eyes are bad or if you're seeing bad, if your perception of things is bad, your whole body is will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Wow. So if you are seeing bad, perceiving bad, negative things, even about yourself, if it's doubt, if it's fear, or if it's about other people seeing others in a bad way, then what is it? Your whole body is full of darkness. And if then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Then let's look at Luke eleven thirty four to 36. Luke 11, 34 to 36. Your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eyes are good, your whole body is full of light. Okay, your eyes are good. Well, let's go back to what do the eyes do? They see sight is, and that also is perception. 
So what you see and what you perceive about people, about things, about situations, about your finances, about your body, about your marriage, about your children, about your job, your friends, your coworkers. When your eyes are good or when you see good, when you see good, your whole body is also full of light, light. When you see good, your whole body is full of light. But when they are bad or when you see bad, your body also is full of darkness. Can you understand now how this so much relates to your physical health? sickness, disease, or pain. If you are seeing good, your body is full of light. If your body is full of light, then that is a force of life. That is the force of life. Light is life. That's John 1. John 1 verse 4. John 1 verse 4. In him was life. And that life was the light of men in him was life and that life was the light of men and so the light is the life god is light god is life the light that life was the light of men so we see that light is Life. Light is life. Well, we go back to Luke eleven thirty four. When your eyes are good or you see good, your body is full of light. So your body is full of life. But when they are bad or when you see bad, your body is full of Darkness. Well, the opposite of life is death. So if you're, if you see bad and everything, the things you see and then are bad and then out of the over the flow of your heart, you speak bad, your body is full of darkness. That's the death. That's the curse of sin and death. That explains why there's sickness, disease, and pain in the body. One of the reasons. So we need to see good. Your eyes are good so that your whole body is full of light, which is life. So that when your eyes are good, your body will be full of life. Isn't that powerful? When your eyes are good, then your body will be full of life. And so God's word, going back to the book, God's word directs us to replace the dark with the light. God's word directs us to replace the dark with the light or the darkness with light. That is what we are supposed to do. And that is what God's commands are. The Bible is full of commands about speaking good and not bad. As I read to you in Psalm 34 verses 12 and 13, it says, if you love life and desire to see many good days, keep your tongue from bad. So we are to replace the darkness that is in us with light. So if you desire to see good, that's Psalm 34, 12 and 13. If you desire to see good, that parallels Luke eleven thirty four. your eyes are good. Then to see good is the goal that will produce light and life in our bodies, which also fills our whole life our whole, every aspect of our life to replace the dark with the light and the bad with the good. 
to see good. So to see good is the goal. But the Bible does not leave it at that. The Bible paves the road to the goal, to that goal, to see good with practical steps, which are the laws of proper speech. So to see good is the goal, but the Bible does not leave it at that. It paves the road to that goal with practical steps, which are the laws of proper speech. By practicing these laws, every Christian becomes trained to see the good in others. By practicing these laws, every Christian becomes trained to see the good in others. We are to practice seeing the good in others. When one observes the laws of speaking good, one inevitably in evolves into a better person. So you become a better person. That is because in, in every interaction, you are focused on not causing others pain. You are focused on not causing others pain. Remember, I read to you last week from Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 to 32. Ephesians 4, 29 to 32, it says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Now I've heard preachers talk about, we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit and they'll talk about doing this or doing that to not or not doing it so that we don't grieve the Holy Spirit and all of that might be okay, but that's taking this scripture out of context. What is grieving the Holy Spirit. Well, it's breaking the command in the previous verse, verse 29. You have to read it right in context. That's do not grieve the Holy Spirit is verse 30. So you need to read verse 29. Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs so that it may benefit those who listen. So if you do the opposite, if you do let unwholesome talk come out of your mouth and it is not helpful, it does not build others up and it does not benefit. That is what grieves the Holy Spirit. And we know that what, when you feel grieved in your heart about something you just said, when you feel grieved in your heart, about something you just said. What kind of a thing did you just say? It was something that was not beneficial. It was something that did not benefit. It was something that was unwholesome. It was something that did not build others up. So you yourself feel grieved in your heart after you say something you know you shouldn't say. Well, guess what? When you're grieved in your heart, it is the reflection of the Holy Spirit in you when you're born again. When you're born again, the Holy Spirit is in you and he's convicting you that was wrong. You shouldn't have said that. And the Holy Spirit is grieved. And that's why your heart feels grieved. When you feel grieved after you said something you shouldn't have said, you said something that was hurtful, angry. And then afterward, you think, oh, Lord, forgive me. I should not have said that. That was so wrong. That was so bad. Forgive me. Your heart is grieving from it. Why? Because the Holy Spirit in you is grieving. You grieved the Holy Spirit. You grieved the Holy Spirit by what you said. That's why you need to repent and ask forgiveness. And if you can go back to the person you just spoke to and also repent to them and ask them to forgive you and say, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I should not have said that. That was wrong. That was bad. And I should not have said it. Because you grieved God, 
you grieve the Holy Spirit and you feel grieved on the inside and you need to repent and get cleansed from those words. And so that's why we are supposed to speak good and speaking bad is what grieves the Holy Spirit. So these laws train us to see the good in others. It trains us to see the good in others. And when you do train yourself to see the good in others and to speak good things always, you inevitably evolve into a better person. You become a better person. Well, I encourage you today that you practice with with faith and the grace of the Holy Spirit in you to speak good and to see good. I think of this phrase, see no evil, hear no evil, think no evil, speak no evil. Practice seeing the good in others. Practice seeing every human being is made in the image of God, even when they're not acting like it. You love them, you see the good in others, and you speak words that benefit others and build others others up and glorify God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Also, I want to quickly invite you to be a partner with us. If this radio program blesses you and encourages you, then we bless you can sow seed. You can write to me at Victorious Faith PO Box 1418 Castle Rock, Colorado 80104 or go to my YouTube channel and click the donate button. I bless your seed in Jesus name. Join me next week. Remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.